Hey guys, John here with a quick video about an issue I ran into a little while ago that I think some of you might benefit from. The issue is related to CORS, which stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. Essentially, this is a programming issue that rears its head in some cases when a program is trying to fetch data from a resource in a location other than its own. In other words, when a script at DomainX.com is trying to make a fetch request to DomainY.com, a CORS error is likely to occur. This happens for security reasons. It's meant to give browsers the ability to prevent scripts that aren't from the same origin to access data on a particular server, unless that server allows data fetching from that origin, but that's a subject that's outside the scope of this video. In this video, I wanna to touch on a way to get around the issue, of course, when you have no control over the server you're making a request to. To quickly show you a course error at work, let's go over a very basic and simple example. I have a blank Next.js app here, and I'm going to try to make a fetch request to google.com. Now, this video is about a way to get around the course issue in the Next.js app. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar enough with JavaScript and Next.js. So I'll declare a URL, which is going to be google.com. Then I'll proceed with my fetch API. I'll do fetch URL. But let's, let's put the fetch API inside an async function. That way we can use async await. So let's do const fetch data equal async like so. And then we declare the fetch API. like so then we'll turn the response object into text data that we can use we'll do constant or sorry const data equals await response dot text and then let's log the data to console so we can see the results. And lastly, let's run our function, fetch data, like so. Now let's run a server. That's on localhost 3000. Let's start a console so we can see our results. Now let's do localhost, localhost 3000. And as you can see, we have an error. And it is a course error because it says that uh, access to fetch from origin has been blocked by course policy. What this is saying is that our origin, which in this case is my local computer here at localhost 3000, is not allowed to fetch data from google.com because Google is, of course, not specifically allowing my localhost 3000 to access the requested resource. Now, there are servers which don't have cores enabled where we don't run into this issue. For example, Instead of google.com, I'm going to fetch data from a site called JSON Placeholder. This is a site that gives users some ready-made endpoints to use for data fetching, which makes it very useful for testing. So if I go here to JSON Placeholder site and scroll down to the resources section and click here on users, for instance, this is the data that is returned to us 
when we make a request to this URL right here. So I'll use this URL instead of google.com in my app to show you that this server right here does not, doesn't have cores enabled. So I'm gonna click here, the same thing. Now this server, this endpoint returns a JSON. So I'll just change that to JSON, hit save. And now if, I, if we go back to the app right here and refresh, we see that there's no course error and that the server returned to us the JSON, the same as this right here. However, in most cases, there will be a course problem that you'll have to deal with. Now let me just change this here to google.com. And just text. Now, cores is a browser issue and only happens when the request is made from the front end of an application, which is the case here. And a way to fix this is to make it so that the request is made from the back end of the application rather than the front end. A way to do that is to use what in Next.js is known as a get static props function. This is a function that runs at build time and always runs on the server on the back end of the app and never on the client, the front end of the app, which makes it perfect for bypassing the cores issue. And we can use get static props in this case because the request we're making doesn't require input from a user beforehand. In fact, in this case, get static props is the way to go even without the cores problem because it allows for the pre-rendering of the page which makes the page both SEO friendly and fast loading. I will, however, cover a case in this video which does require user input and in which we can't use the get static props as a remedy to course, so hang tight. So to use the get static props function, we need to export it like so. Export cost get static props and this is an async function put that on there so now we can create our fetch request inside of this function so let's get rid of the fetch we have down here let's move it up inside of the get static props let's move the url as well And now we, we no longer need to have the fetch API inside of, it, of this async function right here because get static props itself is async. And the way it works is to pass the data to our component down here. All we have to do is return a props property. So like so, and then we'll say props, and then give that the value of an object. I'm gonna call it Google data, but I mean, you're free to give it whichever name you'd like. And then I'm gonna give that the value of data. And now this props can be passed to our component down here. All we have to do is come down here and then bring in Google data like so. And now we can, we can do whatever we'd like with with the data that was passed to us to us from get static props but for our purposes we'll just log it to the console down here save and let's go to our app here and then refresh that and as you can see we no longer get the course error and instead, we get the HTML behind the Google homepage. And if we needed to, we could parse this HTML right here and make any use of it that we'd like. So this worked and we were able to get around the course issue by using the get static props. But 
what if this were a case where we couldn't use the get static props function, like a case where a user had to enter some input into the app first, and then the app would fetch data based on that input. That is a case where we couldn't use get static props. So as an example, I have a Shopify custom app that I'm building using Next. And in it, there are a couple of instances where I ran in the cores, and I'll go over one of them in this video. But this page was made so that the user can create a draft order by simply input in a product ID. And if we look at the script for the page right here, we see that the page is set up so that after the user hits the submit button right here, called create in this case, the get data function is triggered, which is right up here, right here. The function takes in the form data, D, that passes the value of the, the product ID to it, which will be used in the fetch API. All the variables here, what controls what appears on the page and when, they don't really factor in the course issue that we are currently addressing. So we have our fetch method right here. It's a post method. This is the Shopify post request body for creating a draft order. Here we build our fetch API options. We have the method, the headers. The headers contain the API token that's required by Shopify. It is an environment variable for security reasons. We have the content type application JSON, and then we have the post request, the body of the post request. Here we have the URL or the endpoint that we need for this request. The shop name is also using an environment variable. It's defined up here. The token is up here. And now that we have all the data we need, we go ahead and execute the fetch API. Then we turn the response into a into JSON data that we can use. Now for our purposes, we'll just console log the results. That's all we're concerned with. We'll just console this final right there. And so when we go ahead and run the script, I'm gonna put product or variant ID in and hit the create button we get the dreaded course message and a crashed program. As you can see, access to fetch from origin has been blocked by course policy. This again is happening because we're running our fetch request from the client side or front end of our app. And in this case, we can't use the get static props function like before because we have to wait until the page has first rendered for the user to put in the variant ID or the product ID at which point the app will be able to create the draft order for the particular product that the user chose. So to get around the course problem in this case, we make the request via the back end of our app. In Next.js, we can do that by using API route. API routes is everything that is inside this folder, API folder inside of pages. Everything inside of this folder is treated as an API endpoint and not a page. These are server-side scripts only, and therefore do not trigger cores. So all we have to do is create an API route and use it to run our fetch API. So let's do that. I'll create a file inside the API folder, and I'll call it handle draft. .js. We'll do const handler equals async. Give it a, a request and a response. Now I'm making this an async function so that we can use a wait on our fetch API later on. Now inside of here, I will declare a method which will be post. We'll need our fetch API options. We can just copy those from the front end page right here. 
we'll need to define our app token, which is an environment variable. We can copy that from the front end page, and we might as well copy the shop environment variable too, because we're going to need it in the fetch URL. So we'll copy both of these. The body of the options will be the same. So we'll copy it from here. You can put it here. The variant ID will come from the front end, as we'll see in a few. And then our fetch, uh, let's do fetch URL. And that is going to be the same as we used previously here in this page. We'll copy that. We'll put it here. So now on the front end of the app, we want to make a fetch request to this API route that we just created, handle draft. So our fetch URL in the front page will be forward slash API forward slash and then handle draft. We don't need to put the dot JS on there. Next takes care of that for us. The post body objects will now only consist of the variant ID from the user input. We don't really need to declare it separately. We'll just include it directly in the options object. We'll say variant ID, and then we'll give that the value of variant ID. We can get rid of the post body object right here. Don't need that anymore. Don't need a semicolon there. And this pretty much should be, should be it as far as the front page. Uh, in the API route, we'll need to extract the variant ID from the post request. We'll do that by setting our variant ID equal to the request body and then the variant ID key. Uh, these can be the same, can be called the same, they won't conflict. Now we can make a request to Shopify like so. Const response is await fetch URL and the options. Then we'll turn the response object into JSON data that we can work with. Await response dot dot JSON. And then we'll just return the data back to the front end, like so. Now let's let's add in a try catch statement right here. We'll do try and then we'll catch any errors down here. So we'll take these, move them inside here, and what we'll do is we'll return a success object with the data if no errors. Otherwise, we'll return an error object with an error message. We'll save that and let's give it a try. Let's run the app now and see what happens. So I'll put my ID in there and hit create. Now let me clear the console so that we can see what's going on, what the results are. Before we do that, let me just fix this right here. This, there needs to be a return right there. Okay, let's not forget to export this. Let's do export default handler, like so. Hit save. And now let's give it a try. I'll put in my ID right there and hit create. And unlike before, we get no course error and our task was executed.
And that's it. That's a way to get around the course issue when you don't control the resource server. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.